Hello and, and welcome. Um, I'm going to present you something today. It's going to be maybe rather short, and uh, I want to engage, engage with you in, uh, in, in, the, in the conversation about the way we make uh, uh, demos here uh, in ASD. Um, so yeah, I did this uh, survey of seven uh, something uh, uh, demo scene producers, and I asked them the question: What stops you from making uh, your next big great demo? So these were the answers. The first was, yeah, not enough motivation because we are moti uh, we are intimidated by farbras and all that, and uh, we we just cannot do anything. Uh, yeah, I have uh, the. 22% says I have. Uh, I'm doing other things on my computer, so uh, I, I don't have time for this. Similarly, many people say I have a girlfriend, I have a job, and um, but most of people say I don't know how to start. Isn't that uh, isn't that very difficult? And some others say uh, I don't know. I can start. I can find some time, but I don't know what to show. So okay, we can make a tunnel, we can make objects rotate and do this and that. But uh, yeah, there must be more in a demo than this. So. I'm here to try to answer some of these questions, and I'm, I'm going to show you how I do it uh, um, in, I, in ASD, together with the other guys, and it's really very simple. Now, I don't claim that I, I know the ultimate truth, and nobody does, and there are people, maybe in the next seminar by Bonsai, he will say exactly the opposite things. So you can, uh, <laughs> you can uh, believe none of us, or you can uh, believe both of us, but it works for us, and uh, it has worked for me for uh, quite a few years. So. Um, so give it a shot if you think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as I was saying, there are uh, lots of ways to start a demo, but um, basically there are two different categories, I think. The one is to use something like a tool, like uh, DemoPaya or, or Addict or uh, uh, Verzoic or whatever, and uh, that could be, depending on the demo you want to do, a very flexible solution, because uh, I can see the flexibility if you're working with artists and you want the artist to be doing stuff while you're doing something else, so it splits the work uh, quite easily. Uh, but it all depends on, this, on your skill, on the, the situation, on, on the demo you want to do, etc. Or you can uh, just hard code everything in C, uh, yeah, using a rather yeah, minimalistic set of libraries, which is uh, exactly what I do. And many people who are doing uh, much smaller demos, like uh, see the 64Ks and 4Ks, have to follow, of course, the second uh, the second option. There's uh, no other way around it. Uh, yeah, the. Um, the demos we, we do are very hard coded to the point of even just uh, typing uh, open GL commands like even GL begin GL. Some, sometimes I, there's, there isn't even a wrapper around these things. And uh, the underlying uh, library is very Spartan. So you have uh, something like uh, shaders and, and texture management to, to load. Uh, uh, to load them and uh, enable them. Uh, there is no scripting, basically nothing. So there's no. Um, uh, like uh, a, a time script with lines, you do this, you do, you do that, etc., etc. There's, uh, there's no f fancy camera functions whatsoever. I'm going to talk to you about cameras uh, in a bit, and there isn't even a proper p particle system. It's all written from scratch each time. Um, so you would say, but uh, that's crazy. Okay, why, why do you do this? Isn't it more difficult? And I say no, basically. It's not because it's uh, fun to make. I think that the, the fun factor wears out after probably your second demo. But uh, it's definitely well very rewarding, and uh, I think that it's much faster to do demos like this than to script demos. And, uh, and handmade demos always look different. I cannot put my finger on it, but there is something there that you can, you can tell. This was written by uh, using a script, this was written by using um, hard, code, uh, hard coded, and uh, it always feels just a little bit special. I suppose it's the equivalent of uh, um, handmade anything, you know, cars, furniture, and industrially produced. Uh, so yeah, you ask. So how fast can you do it? Yeah, with the, the I don't know if you've seen that uh, a robot demo that I made for uh, Zine 13 headlines, which is uh, has. The concept is quite uh, simple, but the uh, the cameras and the path changing is is uh, is quite a um, quite a difficult thing if you want to do it by uh, uh, by a tool that y uh, you have you have made to make make demos if uh, that wasn't part of what it was supposed to do. Uh, but it was um, 
it was very fast to make. I think it was uh, something like a, a few days. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, something really big, uh, something really big like a iconoclast would take uh, yeah, ages to make without uh, an editor. Uh, some people will say, oh, we've made uh, this, uh, and it is a really big demo, we've made it in, in two weeks. Uh, well, I cannot make something like Conoclast in two weeks, it, it will take two or three months. But I think the, the, effort, the effort shows, and there are some stuff that I'm, I'm really convinced that you can just not replicate using, uh, using a, a demo editor, because it would be too complicated to do in the editor, therefore the editor had to be like... A, a, a superset of everything you could possibly do, and that would mean that uh, the editor would probably need to be worked on for years and years and be something really big to be able to take care of everything. So the, the way it works for me is that uh, I have uh, a frame, and within within here you have uh, within the frame you have action. It's like uh, putting things uh, on the on the canvas and. Uh, I'm just giving you the nomenclature so that we know where, what we're talking about. It's, uh, obviously, you'd have start frame and stop frame and, and things in the middle. But um, I'm going to explain what a scene and, and an action is in this case. Um, yeah, usually, the, the small demos are, are one scene, and, and it's usually one camera, or you can have as many cameras as, as you want, but it's just code, 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 code. So start of, start of the scene code, about two, 3,000 lines of just C code, and then end. And, um, and that's how you make one simple demo. If it's something really big, like, uh, I don't know, Life Force has, has indeed 12, and then you have the, the problem of linking these things together. So when I will talk about uh, um, transitions, uh, eventually in my presentation, I will, uh, I will say what's the difference between moving from one scene, as I defined it here, to another, and from one uh, action, as I defined, to, to another. And I say that generally, if you have very few scenes, then it's uh, easier to um, to control uh, the demo and make uh, make much smoother transitions. But if I said, okay, I'll I'll have a life force in in one file. When I mean what I mean, long file is like one big chunk. It can be in many different files, of course. It would be almost impossible to manage that. So it's uh, it's a balancing uh, and ma managing the uh, the resources a little bit more uh, easily. Um, yeah, and an action would be just a simple effect, like the, the hanging man in, in lithography and, and the particle system or whatever. Now, what I have with actions is always there is this float, it's, and it's associated with its, its um, um, action, and it defines the computational um, effort that the the program needs to put to, to, to go through the action. And when it's uh, zero, then nothing happens. The, the function returns, it does nothing. When it's one, then it, it, it shows the effect. Now, uh, yeah, for example, a very simple example, a, a rain would be something like this. So uh, the max particles, as you go from zero to one, max particles go from zero to uh, max rain particles. So you, get, uh, you would get an effect of just one drop and lots of, uh, lots of drops. Now, why I do that? Um, yeah, so so that I can cross fade actions. This this isn't an effect. I'll, I'll tell you why I use it. And it 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 doesn't happen in front of the camera. This isn't part of the effect. That should all happen uh, outside uh, outside what you see, so that you can have, for example, rain with with this little thing. From it goes from five to six. Between five and six seconds, you get you get the rain starts, so before that it was nothing, and after the sixth second you get rain, and uh, be between 15 and 16 second you get uh, less rain until you get zero. So if you could if you could imagine, it would be like a curve that goes up and down, and um, and this is very important because this way you can get one action and another action and and cross and cross fade them in in a way between them so that you don't have any frame rate spike so everything everything in a demo and that's like the the cardinal rule um don't change the frame rate too fast or too slow so everything that happens has to smooth in and smooth out um yeah and and every everything that i have uh, must uh, follow this rule, even if it's just a mess. So I don't just say mess appear, mess disappear. I say mess appear with FC times the maximum number of triangles, and then it goes, 
you have the, the object and then it disappears. But all this, it has nothing to do with visuals and it's all about frame rate. So uh, what usually, what usually happened would be um, that you would have, uh, uh, let's say, um, a fire effect, okay? a, a fire effect that um, fades in. You would have, let's say, from zero second to the first, you would have the particles uh, more, uh, adding, adding more, you would, you, would, you would have them appearing um, from, from nothing, and then from, from, second, from the first second to the second second, you would have them fade in. So they would al already appear, appear, the computational effort would be a smooth, smooth in, and then fa fade in. You wouldn't mix the two things, of course. Same with Messi, same with everything. Yeah, uh, particle system. The other thing we, we use, like everybody, of course, in, in demos these days, you use what you would call a particle system, and uh, uh, you say you need an, an initialize, initialize function, an update, and, and a render, and you have, uh, for each uh, particle, you have associated a position, velocity, um, lots of things, and it's, uh, it's really good stuff, and it's uh, object oriented, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and it's a good exercise for uh, abstract, uh, uh, what's called abstract particle class or something. Thing. Yeah. Well, waste of time. And I'll tell you, in most of the cases, you you can uh, actually find what in well, more than that, you can actually see where these uh, the, the paths that these particles would be running on. So you really don't have to do any any sort of work with uh, initialization and an update and render. Uh, if you know that your particles are, are not going to hit something, for example, a moving object, so that you would have to to do checkings, etc., etc. You can um, yeah, you can find uh, you can find the path function and uh, and just go and, and render it straight away. So consider um, that, which would be um, um, uh, let's say stars moving in parallel or something effect. So rather than having need, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you have your uh, yeah, random seed, and then you have this function, which is which is uh, like a, a saw sawtooth function. So it goes, uh, unless I haven't made a mistake here in the code, forgive me. About it. So it it would go like this. So a particle would go from the beginning to the end, then back to the beginning, and all of this with uh, with a random uh, with a random speed. And uh, yeah, uh, you could of course do the, the the other thing, and it's it's not about uh, wasting memory. It's just you're wasting time, and you have lots of these things to add. So every every waste of time just adds adds more to the project, and it gets um, it gets lot longer to produce. So with this five lines of code, and and you have a, you know something like this straight away. All the, I, I really don't remember the last time that I did a non uh, um, predeterministic. Let's let's say particle system for for a demo I and mean, there are lots of particle kind of particle effects um systems in in our demos now um the other thing is that uh, i just show you that i i used an srad and uh, as a and basically what if it is uh, stars i try to find the best uh, uh, random seeds to put to put in the demo and uh, position the particles depending on that and the way i do it is that uh, i have for example, con connected my uh, scroll wheel mouse so that I play, I play the demo and I have uh, particles coming, let's say. And I know that in some cases, um, the camera would go through the particles and it would look bad. So the s run that I show you uh, is connected to the, the mouse wheel. So I play the demo and I, I go ch -ch 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 like this until I, until I find one state that looks good. And then I save that. And that, that is for everything. Whenever, uh, yeah, example. It's not just position. It's it's speed, uh, speed of ribbons unfolding. You have. Uh, um, I will I will I will play a video and I, I will show you what I mean in the, the tunnel scene in the animal uh, attraction. Uh, the position of of the meshes. They were these uh, uh, slaves uh, dragging this thing at the end of the uh, iconoclast. I didn't just say you go there, you go there. I just said well, just go somewhere and and that's, ah, that's that looks good the, the, you don't have one mess inside another so that works um oh dear, uh how do I do this now uh let's see uh one second I'm going to play a video ah. desktop yeah Yeah, I mean, all that, that effect was not even 10 lines of code. 
everything that was moving in and out, apart from the camera, of course, it was a little bit more. But all the, the speed and position and uh, the warping and the, the slight rotation and everything, it was all just an, a seed, which I found after a couple of minutes. So that's, that's good then. Uh, yeah. Uh, cameras too. Um, it's quite hard work and um, basically uh, cameras take probably 20-30% of, of my time on a, on a really big demo trying to find, to find uh, a, a really g fitting uh, camera and until maybe not very recently but let's say 2003 I was thinking that definitely cubic interpolated uh, splines is, is the best thing you just put points in space and it works but it, it doesn't seem to work I, I cannot put my finger on it why why I don't like it anymore but these days um, I mean apart from a few special cases when like the rainbow chase in, in life force bec the, the splines are already already set so it would be just a waste of time to try to find some some other movement but these days the only th the only uh, two functions that are uh, I, I base my, my movement is an, an ellipsis so Im imagine a circle like this thing in the middle camera going around like this or like this and then a, li um, a linear movement so you have something like this and you go between this and this using an, an, an S-curve and just in der literally interpolate the uh, glue look at uh, uh, numbers um, so usually what, uh, what that would result in would be something like this camera rotating then catching up with the line then doing this then doing something like this and it's always one circle one line one circle one line or very rarely one circle flash camera going backwards a little bit slower than again and uh, it's much smoother it's uh, and it's very very controllable um, and the same and you do the same with the the, the field of view you you change the field of view always with a, a sine cosine function so that it opens up and close it and so on but I really think that the camera is very important it's a, it's a whole science and uh, I'm still trying to learn as much as I can. Um, yeah, that's the other problem. Have you ever, I'm sure you, you, have, you have thought of that. What happens if you have a really big demo and somebody makes the music uh, and lives in a, in a different country, you cannot be and jam at the same, in, in the same room and somebody has to make the music and maybe lag, that is, you are, f you are coding faster, which is <laughs> the case always with ASD, or you are, um, you are behind. So they, they finish the music and now you have to do uh, your demo that fits. And when I say fit, I don't mean so that you get the, uh, the beats with the flashes, that's really the easiest thing. How do you get the mood of the music with the mood of what you, you are watching? It's, it's quite a problem. And probably in Life Force, there's j in, in other demos, there are so many uh, uh, changes in the mood, uh, how would you do that if the graphics were already there? So yeah, what I do is that we say with, uh, with a music, okay, let's, uh, let's make a song. How many BPMs? He says 120, okay. 120 times 4, 4 quarters times something like 4, it would give you something like, let's say, 24 seconds. Um, 24 seconds, which means that he can uh, he can make some music. It's like a music a musical phrase. So, but I know that that 24 seconds, uh, I cannot just make visuals for 24 seconds. It might be 26 seconds or 23 or something like this. So the way to do it is uh, I basically slow down slow down the demo very slowly so that it's not noticeable. You have your visuals are 26 seconds. You have your music. It's 24 seconds. And uh, this is the delta t of the of the system of the of the demo. It comes back from the system as something. If you add it, you get the time, of course. Now, if you multiply it with something like this, which is uh, uh, if it's one, then it goes like down and and up to one again. It will slow the demo a little bit and then make it faster. And uh, the the integral of that will be, uh, which is time, will be. Uh, smaller, so that you are uh, you're slowing down your demo, and you you get to to the music just perfectly. And again, I put <laughs> I put that factor, or maybe that factor. Any of these factors will do. Uh, obviously, it's better to to have 
uh, to have uh, to change this factor rather than this factor because if you change that to 0.9 you will slow you eventually you will slow down your demo by 90% and it will look like something weird is happening so by changing that you're uh, you're slowing down your slowing down <laughs> And uh, yeah, I put that in, in, the, in the mouse wheel. So I, I go through the demo, I play the demo, I move it. Do the visuals fit? No, again, again, yes. And then I save it, and that's how it works. Uh, yeah, and you think now, okay, we have all this, now what to do? How do you feel the demo? Uh, you have to think what, what a demo usually is. So you have introduction and, um, so, you, so you, I always f forget about those things, because that, that's the easy bit. And it doesn't need any proper um, transitions or anything. Just forget. So then you have scene, scene, and then you get a, a breath typography. So I can, I can, I can make something with typo doing something with typography is really easy. You can generate ideas uh, all the time. And if you if you have typography, scene typography, it's it's much easier to uh, get onto the next idea. And there are lots of things you can do with typography. Well, you need credits. You need the title. Maybe you need some greetings, then maybe you need some poetry, although we try to avoid that uh, these days. But uh, you know, if it's your last resort, then do it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, transitions. Um, actually, I was asked to do this presentation to talk about transitions, but I thought we. Actually, in ASD, we don't do transitions. That's uh, what you see is not transitions. That 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 is the demo. <laughs> so, tr transi what you would call transitions, and and our demo is um, the, the the two things shouldn't be uh, mixed uh, mixed up. Um, and I think I think do transitions f not for the sake of transition, but for the narrative because you want to say something. If you don't have anything to say with your transition, then it's then it's just wrong. And don't forget again, uh, the, yeah, the frame rate must be constant. Uh, constant. The most important. Um, the, the, the key, the key element of, the, of, a, of a good transition is to keep the frame, uh, frame rate. Because there are many times when I saw a good idea, but it was horribly executed because you, you would, you could see that oh, now it's now it starts rendering, for example, in, into a texture and uh, it slows down, so I can see what's what's really happening. Oh, things are moving, there. and you say, oh no, you spoiled it. Um, yeah, and speaking about transitions in the sense of uh, non-flow, flow, uh, not 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 the flow, but the the flow parts, but the, the transition. Uh, I've compiled a small list, which you might agree or not with me, um, about um, the transitions that I would I would try to not to to overuse. And obviously, it's fade in and out. Although a crossfade is always quite uh, impressive if you manage to do it, but it's extremely hard to keep the frame rate constant as one scene gets into another. There is a crossfade in in uh, in uh, Life Force when the the camera gets into the uh, clock, and then you get this uh, scene with the uh, uh, the chairs and the, the beds, and that's a crossfade for two seconds, and it was really really hard to get it just working without spikes on the frame rate. I can tell you that. Um, or another thing, you have something happening, another object comes in, in front and then it goes away and then the scene changes behind. It's good if you use it once or twice. Or you have a scene, you pan, it's blackness, then you pan back, it's some, something else. And the, or flashes. And the reason I'm, uh, yeah, all this effect. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's, it's quite obvious and, and it's, it's seniors that will uh, watch your, your demo. And, they will know that it's the, the oldest trick in, in the book, what you're trying to do. And it's, it's always nice to do something different than what has been done a hundred times. Yeah, as I was saying, yeah, it's, it's all about, uh, um, it's all about um, the story. Um, and you think, so how do you get the story? And I thought, uh, I thought that uh, I, could st I could start by t telling you that it's... Um, well, obviously, you have to observe things uh, uh, around you and, and uh, look at everything as, as a puzzle. But maybe a, a trick is to start with something that has a certain shape or color, or, and then find something else that has uh, uh, that is sharing those um, those similarities, and go from one into the other and to the other, and so on. So I compiled um, a small uh, kind of demo story uh, that I put together in two minutes, so it might not be very impressive, but it could make it into a very interesting two minutes uh, part of a, of, a, of a long demo. So, for example, I start with, uh, let's say, the moon, okay. a circle. 
Yeah. Now, the moon, being a circle, looks like the dot on the letter I, so I have a chance to do some typography. So I do some transitions from one into the other. Not transitions, but I can zoom out and see that it's moon and the eye, and there is a, a, a word there. Uh, and that typography, what it looks like a train, basically, it's long, like a train. So you can have it uh, running in a tunnel. Now, as it's running in a tunnel, it will uh, come out of the tunnel eventually, and something else will come out too. So you can have insects like uh, flying uh, flies or, or some or dragonflies, some, some, something interesting. Now, these things will land on something. Let's say they will uh, land on a pop-up book. I don't know if you've, uh, you've heard them. Uh, you, you, you open the book and there are 3D like um, uh, pop-up uh, cards and uh, and drawings, so they can they can crawl the book, which would be 2D, and then the third dimensions, which is something else. Now, what what would it be on the book? It could be some some figures in uh, uh, figures on the book, like some some people. You zoom out, and the book uh, is in a shop, is in the in the front of the shop. Uh, you, you, you move out more, and it's in a, a kind of a fair light, uh, ambient occlusion render city. And I know I've, this has been done many times before, so maybe skip that part. <laughs> um, now, what that city is, is, uh, is standing on a plane, like a cube, that also has been done probably, uh, which rotates around, and you see, you have your city here, and you have something else here. So you rotate them and you have that something else here. And that something else, I don't know if I have more, probably I don't have anything more. Yeah. Yeah, and you have some, something else that's happening on the other side, which might be connected to that moon. So you could say the other thing that is on the, on the other side ha has, is also sharing some similarities with the moon or something that could be before the moon. So you can have a, a circle going from one into the other. You can have the sun, for example, so that you give some, some concept. Moon, like, um, let's say the concept could be um, the beginning of the day, something like this. So you, you, you have the concept and you have the transition. But as you see, it's not for the, the, the sake of transitions. It's about the flow and the, the, nar the, <coughs> the narrative. Yeah, so yeah, we put all our effects now that we almost have a demo. So yeah, what do we do in the <laughs> with the background? And it's always this question. People find the black background boring. So I have a couple of options for you which might work. One is a, a very um, low-key skybox, really, really low-key. Like you can just about see it. It, it, it makes things look m that, that much better. The other thing is that, I don't know if you've uh, tried the Wing Street, it's this amazing program. You can do um, demo messes in no time. Now do some demo messes like random boxes and stuff. And then do our take it to Blender and do some um, ambient occlusion texture in all static, and then put all that in the background, maybe with a skybox. And it, it does look quite, quite good. Uh, we, we did this in the, um, in the demo, the tunnel or parallel planes, which I quite like. So you have the two planes, very narrow, and moving around, and you move, and, and an effect is happening in, in the middle. All rooms, so if you're moving into something that was called uh, lithography for uh, the Intel uh, competition. Or another thing which uh, probably you've, you've noticed that the Finnish guys <laughs> tried <laughs> quite a lot is the good old has more uh, um, that is related to things that happen around us rather than uh, just crazy, crazy fun. This is you can have a room like uh, uh, we had one in, in, in Life Force, and um, you can put some very interesting, or in uh, um, Edge of Forever, and you can put some really interesting effects and, and ideas in <laughs> a room. So, yeah, last, um, um, the last details. Name, very, very important. I cannot tell you how much time we spend giving, giving a demo a name. Probably the worst thing to do is to give it a... Uh, Give you, to give your demo a name that implies that it's a sequel, like Planet Risk 2. How, how boring could that be? Why, you know, why revisit a five-year-old demo? Move on with your life, you know, do something else. Um, the other thing, a very good trick, you watch the demo, you've watched it a million times, and you don't know if it's, uh, if it's bad or not. If you don't know if the colors are right, the, the, the speed is right, uh, and nothing. Try to do this. Uh, record it with fraps or something, then uh, put it in a uh, video editing program and uh, mirror it. 
and watch it again. You will see that it looks like it's a different demo. It looks like something you've just watched for the first time, more or less. I don't know how that works, but it does. And you, you watch it and you think, oh, that's, that's a good demo, or, oh, no, I have to remove this scene. It's, it's not uh, very good. So, yeah, and uh, eventually it's uh, yeah, a battle between um, too much content and, and too little, and you have uh, pros and cons in, in each case. And uh, yeah, so we have to move now into questions, and uh, I finish this part of my presentation. But, uh, yeah, you need to have some some sense of what is what is good or bad. I suppose you can only get that through experience and going to parties and speaking to people. Drink a little bit of water. Um, so, if you have um, any questions to ask me, just absolutely anything uh, regarding either our uh, productions in, in ASD or uh, my presentation right now. Yeah, I have. Does it work? All right. Um, when you're making the demo, and when I make a demo, I have a lot of loading times, and I disable effects to be able to start quicker and jump into the scene I want to, you know, code or edit. Um, how do you, can you fast forward in your demos, do you disable effects, or what do you do to, to keep uh, development quick? Uh, yeah, um, I don't necessarily uh, disable effects. What I do is I try to, to work on each scene individually and think that this, the, 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 this scene and the next scene, which the order might change at the end, will be linked somehow in a magic way, and I try to find. And uh, once I get to the point uh, of uh, linking all together, it's actually quite hard to work if it's, if it's a really big demo. Of course, I have uh, a function so that you can, uh, you can move the mouse and you can go forward in a demo and move the music with that. That's, that's quite trivial. Um, but usually it takes me something like two weeks to put everything together, and it's the one step that I, I really don't look forward to. For something like Life Force, there was just so much code and uh, thinking that uh, these things have to link and with uh, the frame rate constant, uh, it can be a bit of a hassle. But I think at the worst case, it was two weeks to put that with, with Life Force and it was hard work, but um, it's very doable. But uh, I don't disable effects just to, just to uh, move forward. I have to finish something first and then start something else. Sometimes I might be working on two scenes at the same time, but not more than that. Uh, what, what would you adjust to um, get those transitions, the, the fame, frame rate drops? Uh, well, how, how would, what would you change to get um, like this uh, smoother transition? Uh, yeah, well, as, as I was saying, what happens is that you have, you have the scene and the, the, the whole scene has an, has an um, easy in and easy, easy out uh, kind of function. So I have, a, I have this tool which records the frame rate, the instant frame rate, and it gives you in a graph. So I can see where, where I need to adjust this balance more. And usually it's um, effect fades in, then plays, plays, and then fades out. And then the other line of the other effect goes in like this. So if you add them, they should all be at the same, at the same line. But because that line is... Uh, is the, is the, it should be the frame rate, but it's not. It's uh, how many triangles, for example, I'm rendering. It's not always, that's not always the case. Now, uh, uh, I go back to that program, I look at the frame rate, and, uh, and I readjust until it's, uh, it uh, just works. It, it's not, it, of course, it's not just uh, a matter of, uh, the, the problem is not just uh, with uh, sending uh, more triangles into the card or, or Fill rate, it's uh, texture casting. There are lots of little things that you will you will see at the at the very end of the of the pr production. But again, the adjustment is um, is not hard. You can do it in a couple of days, really, and it it just works. I was wondering um, what kind of external software do you use, for example, to build models, and um, in what format do you store them, and how do you load them in? Ah, uh, okay. Um, I actually only use Wings 3D. 
I use Wings 3D to make um, static models. I used to I used to have uh, this library to do um, rotations and a bit of bones and a bit of uh, a bit of everything really. But I found out that I I prefer doing all the movement. Uh, which isn't much anyway, but all the movement through either through code or through um, a vertex shader. So apart from Wings 3D, and I store it in um, either 3DS or OBG, um, I don't use that much else. Uh, so yeah, and uh, PaintShop Pro, that's the only two things. And Blender for uh, anisotrop um, um, ambient occlusion baking, like, like baking, and that's something I only discovered the last year. So until then I didn't. Basically the models are, are very, very simple. There's only one pair of, of UVs, so it's one pair for both the baking, the, the, light, the baked light, and the, the texture. Now if you wonder how, how, how does that work, oh, it, it does work. In the, in the vertex shade, there are re readjust the UVs and it, it, it works. Um, yeah, and, um, and that's it really. It's really minimal, really minimal. So, so one of the um, one of the reasons you you mentioned that you um, that you prefer to to hard code the all the movements and the things instead of using a tool. For it is that it's it's more flexible. You can put in any formulas for the camera movements. And uh, yeah, like that. well, it, that's that's one thing. Yeah, and there is another thing, of course, because I need to make a tool, and I'm I don't want to uh, but, but lace. But, <laughs> but, but, but could, couldn't you? Uh, I mean, you could have a tool which allows the same flexibility, where where you could um, enter the formulas into the tool and still have the benefit of the tool while having the flexibility of of hard coding it. Uh, yes, but you still have to make the tool. So, <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to spend six months making tools. I want to spend six months making demos. So, I, I mean, even if I had this m magic tool, it would still be all of put putting in functions after functions. So, why not just do it in, in code to start with? I mean, uh, some people say, yeah, visual program. You can get, you can drag and drop this this box, and that will do an S curve. And then you can drag and drop this box, and that will do a flash. And then, yeah, well, first of all, it's yeah, making demos with with flashes and rotating things are are getting a little bit boring now. And second, I'm a, it's faster just to type it, type it in rather than move boxes around. And then your your own tool, of course, will crash, and then you will be cursing, and you will get annoyed, and you will stop making demos. And what's the benefit of that? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you sketch a storyboard of your demo? No. No, 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 no never. Um, the whole demo is always in, in my head, but uh, as individual scenes, and the, scene, the scenes change at the end. But it's interesting because always something magical happens, and I always say that one day I will really, really run out of luck with this. That's what we do. Me and uh, our music, we do that. We say we're going to, let's say, make a, make a big demo, but now it's not just a matter of making a big demo because we've done this. We want to make a demo that has some sort of a meaning, has some progression. It starts low and then it moves into a crescendo and then it, it finishes, or it's the other way around. But there is something that there is a, progr a progression. And I always think I have to find some good ideas for the effect, but I also have to find the good ideas for the progression, and it's quite hard to do that. And uh, I always Think of some scenes that th I cannot put them together in the puzzle, and then something magical happens, and uh, in a week we brainstorm and we say, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, let's put them, let's put them like this," and the music fits and everything, and it's, yeah, it's, I don't know, we will run out of luck one day, but uh, no storyboard because a storyboard would have to change all the time. There is uh, nothing. Uh, the other thing that I've uh, noticed with uh, with getting ideas is that uh, a long time ago I thought that it it would be it's it would be a very good idea to go to let's say a books a bookshop and uh, look at the graphic the design how graphic graphic designs in in the, um, in uh, magazines and books and how other the professionals are doing and I'm not a graphics designer by any stretch of imagination but getting some ideas from that I thought that would be cool and eventually I've changed my mind with it I think that if you if you're going to do that then you will end up basically copying other people's ideas uh, and you you see it in many 
<laughs> many big or small demos that are very influenced by that, and you think it's uh, it's a pity because they they obviously have have the talent and they could they could do something on their own instead of instead of copying some something else. Uh, we get inspiration, of course, but rather than get inspirations from from uh, a magazine that was published uh, last month, I think that the best probably the best thing or what works for us is to get inspirations from uh, art movements that may have, have passed. So you can say uh, pop art or um, cubism or something like this. Uh, yeah. Um, if only I could read that though. It's a little bit far. Okay. So when you talked about you have this, um, sometimes you tweak uh, different uh, like random seeds with a mouse wheel and things yes. like that. When you have some some effect which has lots of different parameters, you need to tweak. Do you, do you just try them out in the code and run it again, or do you have any other method of, of uh, adjusting I, parameters? I run it again, but that has never been a problem. They uh, compile takes really two seconds, and uh, now with uh, now I actually know what will uh, look okay. Mo I know what most of the parameters are first time around, so I don't have to to play too much uh, with that. You can say that even for a simple effect like that uh, tunnel effect that I showed you, there are let's say ten parameters, and you could spend the rest of your life trying to find uh, the best fit for these parameters. But there is no best fit. Because if you're going to spend one month working on, on this uh, simple effect, then by the end, you, you don't know if that effect looks good or bad anyway. So I try to minimize, minimize that time. Uh, I say spend five minutes uh, playing around with, uh, with these values. And if you, if you cannot get uh, the best fit, then leave it for tomorrow and, and so on. So, so I try to just put some, some colors that I think that are nice and tweak only things like position, because it's obviously really bad to have one mesh in, into another and uh, the speed that controls the position. So with colors and, and shapes, it's, it's always, I, I have it um, right the first time around, and it's, uh, it's just a matter of position with the, the mouse thing, and that's it. So when you make a demo, what's there first, the music or the the code? Uh, the code, uh, by far. <laughs> just just to, just to uh, give you um, uh, an idea, uh, Life Force, for example, I started in around February of uh, last year, and the music started around uh, July. So that's that's <laughs> that that's the kind of difference. But sometimes for for small demos, uh, it's like uh, one or two weeks uh, one ahead of of the other. But it, it always works. I don't remember the last demo we did where the music was uh, was ahead of the the graphics, basically. Yeah. But we I, I want to make one which which is like this. It's it's difficult. <laughs> Once you have the, the visuals, then the, the musicians go, oh, yeah, we, we want to do, because you can imagine they are very busy people. They have a lot of other things to do apart from, from demos. Uh, so it, it gives them a, a very good inspiration. So I, I do the code anyway. I don't need inspiration from music. And <laughs> it works out just well. Um, OK, uh, have we finished now? We can no? Um, well, I, I, if we don't have any anything else uh, you want to ask, um, yeah, thank you very much for for coming here, and uh, uh, I look forward to see you. In so. blah blah blah. Okay, there's actually one question on the IRC. Oh, okay. For online watching people. Oh. oh okay, Tomoya from Poland, I think wants to know if ASD writes a plan for the demo or if they just remember everything. A plan? Uh, yeah, we just remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> I hope the question is answered. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there isn't that much to remember anyway. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
well, if I, for example, if I if I had the let's say while I was making a demo, if I had the accident then or something, and I lost my memory, then the demo would be lost forever. There is no nobody sits down and writes, "Ah, we're going to do this, 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 this." So it's a bit dangerous. But how do you, how do you approach the creation of more alternative demos, like uh, the evolution of vision? Yeah, or the one I'm going to show you tonight. Um, yeah, th uh, th that that is a good question because it's uh, it's completely unrelated to almost anything that I, I've said here, and that's the kind of, d of demos I enjoy more doing a lot more. And I, what I wanted to say yesterday, but uh, I didn't, because it would be maybe a bit insulting to the Senior Awards, was that we would rather get the award for uh, um, the Walls of Eric's ra rather than Life Force. Yeah, or the the uh, the other demos that that, that we do. Um, how do you approach making the content for that? Uh, well, <laughs> it's just for these demos. It has to be one idea. It cannot be two ideas at the same time. So you cannot say I'm going to make an alternative demo that has two parts and they interconnect because that's you you you've missed the point. Then you're back into mega demo mode, let's say. Uh, and that idea could actually be, as I said, coming from. A um, I, uh, an art movement of, of the past or the present. Um, so, for example, the, the one I'm presenting uh, today has uh, inf uh, is influenced by uh, a little bit of uh, uh, pop art, isn't it? Pop art as well with uh, the visuals and uh, uh, our own uh, Greek, uh, yeah, art. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, and, and and watching other demos, I can I really cannot cannot tell how how you get ideas. But like for example, the the walls of Eric's, I thought uh, wouldn't it be nice to be a demo with a with an isometric engine? And I thought isometric engine like in Zaxxon. And I thought, oh, what if I make like a scroller with isometric? And and so and so you make it. And uh, and similarly, I hope in, in the future I will make uh, more of more of them as people uh, appreciate it more and more. So yeah. And also, I must uh, just add to that, the, the musicians really like it because it gives them an opportunity to do something very different. Something, you know, play around with uh, the rhythm. And w because we don't care about winning or losing in the, in the competitions, and not that it, it matters anyway, but uh, you can do whatever you want, basically. And, that's, and I think that's what makes um, um, an interesting uh, group, is uh, diversity. The actually, yeah, that's the, the most important thing is, is diversity, not to be typecasted. So the people don't know what to expect next, you know, it's anything. Um, yeah. yeah, orange. It's uh, yeah your choice. We can uh, you know go. I think that we've uh, covered quite a lot of things uh, about uh, how we make and uh, and as I said, I don't claim that I you know have have the key to all the answers and what I what I do might be completely wrong. And I come back in two three years and I say what I told you is completely wrong and just use tools because they're really cool and you can make <laughs> <laughs> you can make faster demos. Although I don't think that will be the case. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I hope that I, I help like, a couple of people see the the, the process of creating a, a demo from a, a very different uh, viewpoint. Especially that uh, random thing—it's it's quite a, an interesting idea—and the slowing down and and up of the demo, which I use all the time. It, it, there are my tools, so there you are. Okay.